Hello, Aubrey St. John here from Cessna Team Structures. We get a lot of damage reporting in the form of heat damage. So I wanted to take a few minutes to go over the basics of reporting and mapping out the site where heat damage is suspect. The most common situations for heat damage to occur are from engine bleed air leaks and lightning strikes. So we'll get started. Today I'll simulate the mapping process for a bleed air leak. You'll first want to inspect the entire area and components affected by heat exposure. For a significant bleed air leak, you'll notice structure and paint will have a brown hue where the potential heat damage has occurred. You'll also want to note where buckling or structural deformation has occurred. As you can see in this photo, the stringer stem has yielded and become deformed from the heat. Once you've quantified the damage area, you'll begin the mapping process. The map you'll develop will consist of a grid using one inch grid squares. In most situations, it is easiest to use a marker and draw the grid directly on the damaged structure. Grid out the entire burn site and allow two to three grid squares on the outer perimeter to transition into areas that appear to have not been affected by heat. Label the fuselage station, water line, wing station, or buttock line in the photos so we know the exact location, as well as forward, outboard, up, etc. Note that the grid should be applied to any compromised structure, including skins, doublers, extrusions, or frames. With engine bleed air leaks, it is especially important to carry out a thorough engine beam inspection, whether it be in the pylon structure or inside the tail cone. Now your authorized NDT facility can begin taking conductivity readings. Write all conductivity values within each grid square. These readings are subject to the material properties being tested, therefore the NDT technician will need to know the material specification of the structure being tested. Provide the part number of the component being tested and we can provide this information. Once all the readings are taken, you've confirmed that the outer grid squares have nominal conductivity values Snap a few photos of the grid work. Keep the image high resolution and make sure we can read the values before sending. We'll then analyze the readings and see what areas have become weakened and completely lost their temper and what it will take to restore strength to that area. That's the basics for mapping heat damage. If you have any questions, feel free to give us a call here at Team Structures at 316-517-6061 or send us an email at csstructures at cessna.com. Thanks for watching and take care.